So I've had a little wander around and picked up a range of wallaby grasses. Um, these have had a number of name changes, but at the moment they're called Rhytodosperma species. Now in this case, they all have a little tuft of hair at the, at the ligule, which is fairly distinctive. This is quite a chunky base, and you'll see the perennial nature of that, it doesn't come out of the ground easily. Um, so this first one is the bristly wallaby grass. And wallaby grass seeds have hairs, rows of hairs on the back. Um, and there's a little, what the base of the, of the uh, spikelet, or base of the floret I should say. Um, there's a little thing to call a callus. There's a tuft of hairs on that, and there's two tufts of hairs above it. In this case, and they've got two separate rows with nothing in between on the back of the seed. And they've also got the lemma projects out into two into two things called seti, that like little horns, almost like on, like horns on the top of the seed. In this case, the bristly wallaby grass. They're very narrow. Now this one's a hill wallaby grass and it's got a chunky head, chunky little seed, and it's also got a quite thick palea that you can see. It's also got distinct two distinct rows of hairs. And this one here is um, the stiped wallaby grass. So it's got a different shape um, to the distribution of the spikelets. They're coming off the stem in what's called a raceme structure. And it's only got a sort of few tufts of hair, hairs at the side of the seed. It hasn't had complete rows. And it's got a very pointy little um, projection at the bottom of the seed, the callus tuft, so where the callus tuft comes from. And this one is purplish wallaby grass. Um, it's a much bigger plant. And this one's called right of the sperm of fulvum. And the, instead of distinct rows of hairs, the hairs run all the way down the length of the lemma. Uh, and yeah, and it's got broader leaves as well. Uh, our last one is from a little wet spot. Um, this is wet country grasses, just shallow seasonal wetlands. This one's brown back wallaby grass. Probably can't see, but there's a little brown colour on the back of the seed, distinct rows, quite an open seed. And when they're happy, this bottom branch flexes down. And the other thing about this too is the leaves. Um, don't have hairs where the other wallaby grasses are hairy. So this is quite, you can work this one out just by where it's growing um, and the lack of hairs on the leaves and that's the in roll look to it. So you can work this one out even if it's not flowering. Okay. And we've got another grass here which, see that the spikelet is actually sessile to the stem. Um, this is called the common wheatgrass, so this, the way they join on is quite distinctive and the glooms will persist even if the seeds have fallen, so that's fairly distinctive, fairly distinctive wrap around big that wraps around the stem. So, uh, I should say, if you can't find, if it's not a good time for seed, there's other places you can find seed. Uh, they can be caught in spider webs. They can be sometimes with the bigger tussock grasses. Sort of few have, have got themselves buried inside the base of the tussocks. Have a look in there, or you can take your shoes and socks, take your shoes off and run around and see what sticks in your socks. It's amazing what you can find that way. And the other one, if, if too early, sometimes with the annual grasses, if you pull out a little, you know, a little new shoot new young plant, the old seed will still be stuck to the bottom of the plant and the other thing is you can sometimes with the perennial grasses in particular, this, there'll be a swollen stem where the seed head's going to come out of, you can open that up and 
they'll be small and not quite there, but often you can work out what they're going to turn into. So there's a few extra tricks for getting access to sort of fertile material at non-optimal times. So I think we should go for a little wander and have a look for a few more grasses.